My name is Blake Brogan, and I'm here with my partner, Rod Zabriskie. We are of Money Insights. Uh, we're a strategic wealth building firm that helps a lot of alternative investors and high income individuals do exactly what we're going to talk about right here. The way that most people invest is they build up capital in a typical savings account, right? Or someplace we often refer this to this as your opportunity fund. So you build that capital up. And then when opportunities arise, uh, we just liquidate that opportunity fund, that savings account, deploy the capital. And then as it kicks off cash flow, we just put it right back in the bank account. And so the natural inefficiency that happens for a lot of alternative investors is as your money is in between deals, as it's on the sidelines, it's just not doing much productive, at least in today's very low interest rates. This is in comparison to what a lot of people use just with their regular savings account uh, for that opportunity fund. We're going to show a side by side and say, okay, if I have the same uh, dollars I'm starting with, same investment pattern, but I use the investment optimizer instead of the regular savings account, then where does that get me? Subsequently, what we're going to do is start purchasing some real estate, uh, like our own properties, uh, cash flowing assets. And what, when we do that, we're going to put 20% down, finance 80% through a traditional lender. And that 20% down is what's going to come from, on the left-hand side, the investment optimizer, on the right-hand side, the savings account. To begin with, we have that first 100,000 that goes in. And you'll notice on the right-hand side, savings account, we take that 100,000, we go and invest that in syndication. On the left-hand side, you'll notice it's 74,000. And you might be saying, Rod, this was supposed to be better than the savings account. And it is. And you'll see this in, in the long term that that's what happens. But with what we're doing here, there are some costs to starting it up. And we'll get into all the, the details on that. So it's, it's not going to be a mystery by the time we're done here. The, the real power here is, is what you do and, and what you love. It's, it's creating really cool value with real estate. And so uh, even on the right hand side, you know, you should turn that 500,000 into basically $20 million worth of, of real estate. But if we can do that and do it even better, right, turn that instead of 20 million, turn it into 22 million, then who wouldn't want that, right? And so that's what we're going to get in and show you kind of how that works. The vehicle that we're utilizing for this strategy is what we refer to as a max overfunded uh, dividend paying whole life insurance policy. Uh, and as I read that, one, it's a mouthful, but two, if, if you're seeing this for the first time, one of the things that often jumps out to people is life insurance. And, and utilizing life insurance as a wealth building tool is something that people have very opinions on, certainly. But I do want to clarify, we, we use this long definition very specifically because when we're designing policies for this strategy specifically, our focus is purely in building value to go out and utilize this account for the investing that we're going to do. I think this crowd, if anyone uh, knows the value of of leveraging, right? We do a lot of that when we invest in real estate. Um, in this case, we're, we're using it with this in this other way. And number one, it allows us to create this tax-free growth that Blake talked about inside of the policy. Number two, it allows us to create value in multiple places at the same time. And then third, because of the way that works, we're actually creating an arbitrage between the two sides. In other words, what's happening on the left-hand side in our in our little bucket there that we created that opportunity fund is that money is growing on a compound basis and as we're flowing money in through the loan side we do pay interest on on the loan but we end up paying a simple interest on that loan and so it ends up being very different we create this arbitrage by doing it why people implement this strategy it's very simple right if you're going to be investing um, in real estate anyways flowing dollars through the investment optimizer as opposed to just using the place where most people are doing bank bank account saving account maybe money market right there's just that added layer of profitability. So it just can be easily plugged into whatever you're doing. And just by flowing the money through this strategy, right, we're just increasing the returns that we would get, uh, even though we're able to just invest in the exact same things that we would be doing. And so how are we doing that? Well, tax-free growth, which is very important, I know, to a lot of real estate investors to be able to have our capital growing in a tax-advantaged environment. And we're able to do this in a safe and predictable way. I use this strategy. So, I mean, I'm sold on it. I know a lot of Dave Ramsey villainizes you know, whole life insurance policies. Yeah. And I don't I don't think that's guidance for people who actually have access to meaningful resources. And so yeah. it's probably why this strategy isn't a mainstream thing. But Rod, you can probably talk deeper. The type of whole life policy that he's talking about is very different than what Blake described here as well. For example, we talk about creating about a 5% net return and just like a plain vanilla type of whole life policy, you might only get 2% and, mm -hmm. and you don't have cash value in the first year. So that may be kind of where, where Amy's original question came from, like a plain vanilla whole life policy, you put your money in, you don't have anything in your cash value initially. So you don't have any liquidity. You know, just as part of a whole plan, I don't think I heard you guys mention it, but you need safe dollars, right? You, you, you mentioned, hey, I could put it in the market, but if you need safe dollars, you're not going to get 5% on a bond. Having the fees up front, then coming back, but getting the growth, I think this is really the only place where you can get access to it at a return that's 
not bad. Some people might say, well, I'm building up my kind of my nest egg, my real estate portfolio inside of that. And yet, if you think about it this way, a lot of people, once they get going on, on the real estate or what we call the alternative investment side, they don't want to go back. Part of the ironic part is we talk about trying to lower that death benefit as much as possible, but as you, you'll you find, as you start flowing your investment dollars through the policy, the death benefit that you create is not a small number. So it can be a pretty significant thing uh, when you start implementing the strategy as well.